This is my fourth video on the very best small wheel bicycles you can buy. If you are interested in small wheel bikes or Brampton tech or electric bike tech, you may want to subscribe or hit the bell button. This video is going to feature only three bicycles and these are bicycles which are either electric or can be electrified. The first bike I'm reviewing is the Kalkhoff Durban. This is a bicycle with 20 inch wheels that was built to be electric from the ground up. There is an electric version of it which is actually sold in the States for about $2500. For a simple electric bike that doesn't cost much and is actually hand built, at least the frame is hand built and has some really good tires and, and just an excellent frame, it's not a bad price at all. It's a thousand dollars less than what you would pay, be paying for a foldable electric Brompton. The electric Brompton is going to be minimum $3,600, so roughly $1,100 more, and that bike actually cuts out at 15 miles an hour, whereas this one goes up to 20. That's a huge difference in everyday use. But the real reason I'm recommending this bike over the Brompton and over many other bikes is not really because of the electric version. You can get this frame without the battery and uh, many European dealers, possibly some Asian or other dealers also, still have those bicycles. They sell for about 700 euros. That is less than $800. And to get uh, a frame that is built for electrification, already has space for a battery, is very sturdy, a hand-built frame that is good quality, made in Europe, either Germany or the Netherlands, this is an excellent, excellent deal. Even if you have to ship it into the U.S. and pay another hundred dollars for shipping, I think the money is totally worth it. Uh, you can, for another thousand dollars, you can put on an excellent kit. For twelve hundred dollars, I could put on a hugely powerful thousand watt kit. But if you just want to get go easy and don't don't spend too much money, you can even buy off the shelf ready-made kits. The bike is going to be maybe 800 or 900 US. You spend another thousand dollars on the kit. You have a brand new electric bike that is handmade, a hand built frame for $1,900. That's an absolute steal. So, this bike is totally recommended. I think it's a very attractive bike. I think it's a very well built bike. It's true that the components are kind of basic. But those you can upgrade over time and they are going to last uh, for a few years anyway. What you're paying for is really the frame. The second bike I would like to recommend is the Go Cycle. This is not as compact as a Brompton and it starts at $4,000. But if compactness is not so important, this bike is still foldable. It's still going to go through many revolving doors. It will fit into the crowded elevator. It can be stored under an office desk in most cases. You have to take measurements obviously, but in most cases this is still going to make an excellent commuting bike. And just for maybe three, four hundred dollars more than what you would pay for an electric Brompton, look at what you're getting with this bike. You're getting carbon fiber, magnesium, aluminum alloy, custom five spoke wheels, uh, front wheel suspended from one side only, hidden cables, a monocoque frame, I mean I could go on and on, suspension front and rear, you are getting so much and if you take care of this bike it can last a lifetime. The only thing I don't like about it is that it cuts out at 20 miles an hour, which is faster than the Brompton but still, for this kind of money, $4,000, if especially since this one comes with the motors as powerful as 500 in the front, I would like to be able to go faster. There is some sort of a software hack that you can purchase or download. I haven't looked into it. If, if you seriously want speed and you're th thinking about this bike, I suggest you do a research online first to see how you can hack the speed limiter. 
for this kind of money I really would like to hack that I don't see any sensor just by looking at the pictures so I don't know how the speed can be hacked but I've heard that there is a software option more expensive models go up to five thousand dollars and more and you have plenty of color selections as well I think it's a beautiful bicycle I think it's an amazing uh, amazing technological innovation and for four thousand dollars if you take care of it it should last for the rest of your life it's definitely a solid purchase the last bicycle I am including in this video is the Tinker from Riese und Müller this is a German company they have been around for a while they are the people behind the magnificent birdie foldable bike this is not a foldable bicycle but if you take a good look at it there is a way of getting this into a revolving door in many cases you can remove the the seat post or you can just push it down and th the front uh, column the steering column is foldable there is a hub and you can completely fold it down to line up with the frame the front wheel you can remove with a quick release and that can make it a really really narrow option if you stand up the bicycle on the rear wheel you probably can get into many uh, revolving doors elevators and tight spaces you can also park the bicycle under the typical office desk this is good news in fact this is an amazing frame design that is intended to be somewhere halfway between a foldable and a completely standard average bike you get a lot of interesting technologies uh, there is a, a chain free drive it's not muddy or dirty it's a hand built frame a very good quality frame there is a Bosch drivetrain and uh, the Bosch so far has an excellent reputation for reliability the only thing I don't like about Bosch is that they ch are trying to be very efficient so if you want to accelerate aggressively uh, the hub is not going to let you do it it's going to force you to go through the gears to accelerate as gradually and as energy efficiently as possible and so there are some imperfections but I think overall this is an excellent bicycle and excellent frame and the most amazing thing is there is a 32 mile per hour version you may need to contact the company for it very few dealers carry that uh, that version of the bike but it does exist I think if I'm paying five six thousand dollars for a bike this is roughly a six thousand dollar bicycle for the highest ranking model I really want to get uh, the 32 mile per hour I definitely don't want something that cuts out at, at 20 so whereas the go cycle cuts out at 20 that is also a cheaper bicycle you pay more here but you also get more I think it's an excellent bicycle all three of these bikes are excellent depending upon what you want to do if you want to build your own bike I would get the Durban no question about it if you need something that's foldable but really high-end the go cycle is an excellent uh, option and then there is the stinker which is kind of a high performance version this is something that you could even use for racing it has really high speed and a very sturdy solid frame that does not break does not fold anywhere but I would I would recommend any of these three again depending upon what you want to do and what your budget is obviously the Durban is the cheapest here go cycle falls halfway between and you really have to have a, a, a big pocketbook to be able to buy a tinker but I think people who have bought it have not been disappointed this is going to be it for this video I am including some useful links below if you want to check out these bikes and again if you're interested in small wheel bikes or e-bike tech please subscribe